playing the trumpet can be a lot of fun. On the other hand, it can be difficult and frustrating at times. Our goal in this presentation is to instill easy to grasp, logical, and natural approaches to help you or your students gain success quickly and with a positive attitude. Just now, was he thinking about breathing? No, of course not. Breathing is natural and automatic. While playing, it's essential to keep your air usage comfortable and relaxed. Natural and easy breathing is the key to success. When playing the trumpet, the air should always be moving, either in or out, a two-part process. A common mistake among many players is the addition of this third step, making the process inhalation, hold, exhalation. By holding the breath even for a second, you create tension that results in a choked or thin tone. You can quickly gain the basic concept of an open, relaxed breath by using the words how to. The first step to an open breath is to have good posture with your torso upright and tall. Say the word how silently, which will open the throat and allow a more silent, deep breath that extends down to the abdomen. Your abdomen should move out without the shoulders rising. For the exhalation, say the word two. Think of blowing out candles on a birthday cake. The air should rush out in a steady flow while maintaining that same open throat feeling as with your inhalation. <sighs> Notice how the inhalation flows directly into the exhalation. There is no middle step of holding the air back. Try to make this type of breathing a part of your everyday practice. Most problems on the trumpet can be traced back to improper air usage. A great breathing exercise is to put a piece of paper on a music stand and angle it slightly away from you. Take one step back. With a full breath, focus your air and try to blow the paper off the stand. Once you can do that easily, take another small step back and try it again. You will need to move a good volume of air as well as focus the stream to blow the paper off at greater distances. Another great way to practice moving lots of air is to use a plastic tube. A tube with a diameter of between three quarter and one and one half inches is best. Or you can simply roll up a piece of paper if you don't have a plastic tube available. Exercises you can try with the tube or the paper might go something like this. Place the tube between your teeth, then take five relaxed inhales and exhales without any break. Now, take an additional five inhales and exhales without that tube, but add the two syllable to the exhalations. Now, immediately play a relaxed note on the trumpet. The object is to transfer the feeling of the tube breathing to the trumpet. It's very, very important to do this exercise from tube to trumpet without any break. So your body can immediately replicate the sensation before your mind can incorporate bad habits and tension. Some problems you should be aware of include breathing from the chest instead of the abdomen, the shoulders rising towards the ears due to tension, and the sound of a hiss, which means your throat has become closed or become more tight. Now that our breathing is efficient and relaxed, it's time to put the mouthpiece on the embouchure. The embouchure is the placement of the lips, facial muscles, and jaw while playing the trumpet. A good embouchure, when combined with proper air usage, allows a player to develop and maintain good tone quality, range, flexibility, and endurance. Although embouchures will vary slightly from player to player, a good embouchure generally exhibits the same fundamental characteristics. The lips should be slightly rolled in, the corners firm, the muscles of the chin pull down to form a U. Don't push your lips together at the aperture. Instead, feel as though you are holding them apart. You can simulate the feeling by placing a small straw between your teeth, as described in the segment, How to Start a Beginner. Now, let's place the mouthpiece on the embouchure. 
you can use a mirror to check your mouthpiece placement. The placement should be as symmetrical as possible. I mean centered left to right and top to bottom. This is the suggested placement, but different players will vary slightly based on lip shape and dental formation. As a general rule, drastic non-symmetrical placements should be avoided. The embouchure and mouthpiece should be wet for most players, just enough moisture so it doesn't stick. Minimize your mouthpiece pressure, just make a good seal. With the lips on an even plane with the teeth, you should be able to see four quadrants of red. No lip is overlapping one another, the teeth are slightly apart, and the aperture is in line with the space between the teeth. This will result in the trumpet having a somewhat downward angle while you play. Finally, we're ready to make a sound on the mouthpiece. Too often, players try to buzz on their mouthpiece rather than have it happen naturally. To find the correct balance between aperture focus and volume of air, try this exercise. After breathing in, form your embouchure just as you begin to blow. Rather than trying to buzz, start with a wide aperture so only air is heard. Gradually focus the airstream while continuing to blow fully. A buzz will happen naturally as a result of the balance between airflow and focus. Once buzzing occurs, it is important to learn to focus that vibration into the most efficient and concentrated sound possible. Making the aperture too small will reduce the air volume, dampen the lip vibration, and produce an overly pinched sound. A perfect aperture size with good balance of lip tension and air pressure produces an ideal sound. An ideal sound can only be produced with that full open breath we practiced earlier. And again, the embouchure is unique to each individual. Try to incorporate some of the basic concepts we've given you as guidelines. What matters is the sound, not the look.